Google self-care products and you will be met with an onslaught of products that you'd never even think would exist. Cooling globes, scalp massagers, pillow mist, even affirmation cards, which are literally just cards with Pinterest quotes on it. Good quotes, don't get me wrong, but did they really need to be a physical product? Why did a manufacturing plant literally have to use paper and energy to print and package these and then ship them all across the world? And those aren't the only self-care products out there. The few that I just mentioned, along with stress balls and wireless hand massagers, are only a handful from this one BuzzFeed list about self-care products. There are so many more than just those. Go onto TikTok and search the term self-care and you will be met with a video after video of products. It's as if the phrase self-care care has become synonymous with buy more stuff. A hundred and one dollars for a Krabby Patty? With cheese, Mr. Squidward, with cheese. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about how hyperconsumption and the pursuit of caring for ourselves has distorted self-care and our relationship with money. Let's talk about whether we really need all these products just to find peace and health. And let's talk about the underlying reason we feel the need to buy into these products in the first place. If you're new here, I'm Kara, and I make videos on the intersection of money, media, and intentional living. If that sounds like your cup of tea, be sure to subscribe and check out my playlist of all my other video essays. I have several on the topic of consumerism and how it affects our planet and our finances, so go check those out after this video. Also a big thank you to today's sponsor, Connect Team. Connect Team is an all-in-one employee app for non-desk and frontline teams. From massive enterprises to small businesses to mom and pop shops, hundreds of thousands of people worldwide choose Connect Team to connect their staff, manage day-to-day -day operations, and drive their business forward. Basically, if you run a business that involves frontline, non-desk employees, Connect Team makes it so that you don't have to use a bunch of different apps to keep people connected or rely on old school methods like bulletin boards and texts. It's a one-stop shop that saves time and saves money. If this sounds like something your business could use or you'd just like to learn more, Connect Team is offering a 14-day free trial with no credit card needed. You can check out the link in my description box below for more information and to download the Connect Team app. If you're a business owner, a team lead, a manager, or an HR professional at a company that has a lot of frontline, non-desk employees, definitely check out Connect Team because it can make operations and communication so much easier for everyone involved. So go ahead and check out Connect Team and thank you so much to Connect Team for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so self-care is defined as the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness, in particular during periods of stress. The concept of using items in the pursuit of self-care isn't new. It can be seen in places like ancient Egypt, with Cleopatra herself supposedly bathing in tubs of donkey milk. Medieval Europeans had skincare routines full of ointments and powders. And ancient China supposedly created and famously used jade rollers around the 7th century, a tool that is now one of the many viral self-care products we see across TikTok and Instagram. But nowadays feels different. Let me show you what order you need to be using your products in when you take an everything shower. Yes, there has often been a level of commercialization to aspects of self-care throughout history, but these days it feels more extreme. We have more products, more trends, and more media messaging that arguably steers us further from self-care's original purpose. For example, look at the routines that flood our social media feeds. Night routines, morning routines, shower routines, each one filled with new products, oftentimes targeting areas we never even knew we should be considering. Like, I think this is eyelash washing or conditioning here. To be honest, it makes my eyes burn a bit just looking at it. And what I think we're seeing here is this evolving visual language of what self-care means. All of us understand on a high level that taking time for ourselves and taking care of ourselves is important. It's an element of life that we seek and therefore try to communicate. But we live in a visual medium world, meaning our language for communicating broadly is often visual. And let's be honest, it is difficult to communicate the inner work of self-care in a visual medium that is compelling and easily digestible. Like how are you supposed to show the practice of learning to enforce boundaries in some colorful aesthetic way? Or how do you show yourself reworking your relationship to substances in a way that fits with some popular Doja Cat song? It's possible, but it's awfully hard. At its best, these self-care motifs we see in media are like a silent film with no subtitles. They show us some actions of self-care, but leave the inner dialogues and emotional nuances muted, pushing us to equate self-care with mere physical gestures. But at its worst, commercialized self-care is arguably preventing us from becoming a better, more cared-for version of ourselves by having us chase distractions and fluff. I think it can even lead us to feeling disconnected to ourselves because we can end up spending more time 
focusing on what's outside of us rather than inside of us. Now, distraction chase is a bit of a harsh way to put it, and I don't think it's always necessarily true. I mean, is it absurd to believe that using a bubble bath mix for relaxing baths after work qualifies as a valid form of self-care? I don't think so. I think what I just described can be a great form of self-care, but to be clear, I don't think it's the bubble bath mix itself that is the self-care. In my opinion, the real self-care being done is the space created to decompress after work, to sit with yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, and to take Take care of your hygiene before bed, which will help you be more comfortable and healthier. It's a small distinction, but an important one. Because what I think our self-care product obsession does to us is conflate the product itself with the act of self-care. It can trick us into thinking that a product is an answer to a problem, when in reality, it might just be an accessory that you don't even need to get the same result. Like you could still have a warm, relaxing bath to decompress after work without the bubble bath mix, and it could still be an incredibly effective practice for self-care. I think the following quote from the Psychology Today article perfectly captures what I'm trying to get across. Quote, self-care is not something we buy or do that exists outside of us, but rather a way of being in a relationship with ourselves. Okay, so we've mentioned the distinction between the act of self-care and a product that is sold to us as a self-care product. But that false connection between a product and its ability to lift us into some higher realm of self-care, where does that come from? Why is the first impulse for so many of us to buy something when we're in need of respite? Well, nowadays, I think one of the most popular places where we can find that false connection being made is through influencers and celebrities, which, let's be honest, is just a modern extension of generation-old marketing tactics. Take someone that you admire for their personality, their lifestyle, or their aesthetic, and then pair that with the visual language of self-care in a call to action at the end for the latest XYZ. And you have yourself a recipe for internalizing that this product they're pushing is the answer you've been looking for. And I'm not even talking the answer to a straightforward problem like getting your skin smoother or believing that just one more skin scrub, despite a cabinet full of others like it, will do the trick. I'm talking the subconscious abstract answers that we often seek, especially in regards to self-care. Like how to get more peace, more calm, more joy for yourself. It is so easy to watch a celebrity or influencer or honestly just friends and family online and equate the narratives of self-care they're displaying with the products they're using, as if your ideal self-care state is only a purchase away. Buying something we don't need also gives us the sense of control, which might be what we're desperately seeking underneath our claims of self-care. When we feel anxious or stressed or uncertain about something, I think it's natural to seek out ways to feel in control of our lives. Like maybe I can't control all the relationship stuff and work stuff that's going on in my life, but I can control the kind of face roller I get, the color I get it in, and when it shows up at my door. And that might be enough to quell my anxiety for a bit or give me some sense of autonomy. But the problem is that it is fleeting and superficial. It doesn't address the deeper issues of what makes us feel out of control. Nevertheless, companies love that we do this because it feeds into this hunger we have for more, more buying, more throwing our money at items that we hope will facilitate self-care, and ultimately more products that might end up collecting dust or just littering landfills one day. This isn't to say that products aren't enjoyable or that we should never buy another massager or face mask ever again, just that we need to separate the ideals and aspirations of self-care from the products. So that when you do buy a massager or a face mask, you are truly just buying a massager or a face mask rather than trying to buy into this larger, mostly fabricated narrative. I'm in like the shampoo section. I don't need shampoo, but I just always like looking and I found this hair oil and I feel like I've seen this on TikTok and I kind of want to try it because I'm just obsessed with like hair care products. This is the coconut miracle oil. What I think so much of this comes down to is that while taking care of ourselves is absolutely important, hyperconsumption is not the only way to achieve this. And I know this sounds cheesy, but I think having a good relationship with your money and with your spending is actually a form of self-care. Checking in with how much money is going towards things we don't need versus saving for our future is a way to care for ourselves. It's a way we can look out for ourselves, help ourselves achieve big goals like early retirement or having an emergency fund. And it can bring us a lot of peace, calm, and joy. And maybe just as cheesy but true, taking care of our planet and consuming less is also a form of self-care. It's a way we can look out for the future of an environment we all share. And it's a way we can learn to cultivate gratitude for the products we might already have instead of falling into the trap of desiring more. But what do you think? Do you feel like we are a culture that is increasingly obsessed with self-care products? Do you think trying to buy our way into 
to a better self is ever justified? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what topics you would like to see me cover next. Thank you so much for watching my video and for those who subscribe and support my channel through Patreon or buy me a coffee, both of which are linked below. And if you wanna see another video like this one, check out my other video essay on social media's obsession with aesthetic subcultures. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.